It's my great pleasure to present our today's speaker, Professor Fernando Leon Saavedra from Spain. He kindly agreed to deliver a lecture at our seminar. And if you're ready, please, thank you very much and please go ahead. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, Alexei, for your presentation. So first of all, we want to send to the organizer of this uh, seminar, uh, Alexei Karapetians, uh, Vladislav Krashenko, for the killer invitation, and to give me the opportunity to present all results in this international seminar on uh, analysis, differential equations, and uh, uh, um, quant um, mathematical physics. I, I remember, but also I want to I, I want to extend or acknowledge to to Tatiana Andreeva for her unconditional technical support. Okay. Now I will present because I I will talk about my iPad uh, because I will will make some picture and some. Uh, with the Apple Pencil, and probably I I will share my presentation, but probably uh, I disappear. Okay, I, my my because when I present the presentation, the the camera don't don't, don't work, right? So uh, the lecture today is a joint work with Maria Jose Gonzalez from University of Cadiz. And uh, it is connected with commutant and the commutant of a uh, linear operator on Hilbert space. Uh, as we can see, uh, this talk or this material is related with analysis, but also with mathematical physics. OK. Uh, both concepts, commutativity and uh, double commutativity, uh, is present in the development on quantum physics. For instance, if you, if you consider the Heisenberg principle, okay, Heisenberg principle is based <coughs> on a non commutativity property of two uh, concrete self adjoint operators, okay? But even the double commutant theorem by John von Neumann has some physics interpretation. Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 many people know that von Neumann algebra play an important role in the, uh, in the mathematical structure of uh, quantum mechanics. But anyway, the idea of this uh, work is uh, to, um, to try uh, to, to understand both concepts, but from a theoretical point of view. We don't, we don't show any application on an, uh, uh, in mathematical physics, okay? Uh, okay, so let me to say something about the, sorry, about the structure of the talk. Sorry. Uh -huh. So let me to say that firstly, uh, we will analyze in this talk some basic definition, some heuristic uh, reasoning. Uh, for instance, we will introduce what is the double commutant property, uh, what, what is uh, the minimal commutant property. We also recall uh, the analytic to applet operators, uh, some of their basic uh, properties. And uh, next, we will present our results on minimal commutant for analytic complete operator, which is a full characterization of such property uh, for analytic to complete operator. And the rest of the talk, we will try to present partial results uh, of op of uh, we try to characterize the. Um, the double commutant property for uh, analytic to applet operator. We we will able to to see this characterization in the univalent case. Also for the class of entire functions, when the symbol of the multiplication operator is an entire function. And finally, also we will try 
to we will present a characterization for symbols in the Thomson Cohen class. Okay. Uh, the general case of uh, of when the symbol is a bounded analytic function is a problem that still resists. But anyway, the idea of this talk is to present uh, the result avoiding technicality when it is possible and to try to to see some basic um, heuristic rationing. OK. OK, first of all, let us describe three algebras associated to an operator. If T is a Hilbert space operator, we denote by alg, alg of T, the algebra generated by T and identity. The commutant of an operator T is defining uh, uh, between with prime and is the set of all operators that commute with T. Um, finally, the double commutant of an operator T is the set of linear operator B that commute with A when A is every element in the commutant in the commutant of T. So we have that the algebra generated by T and the identity is contained in the double commutant, and also the double commutant is contained in the commutant of the operator. And it's, it is not so difficult to show that uh, the commutant and the double commutant of a given, of a given operator are uh, algebra which are close in the width operator topology so that uh, both algebra contains always the weak closure when i say weak closure is the weak closure in the in the weak operator topology or the closure in the weak operator topology so both um, algebras contain the weak closure of the algebra generated by t and the identity okay and with this terminology John von Neumann uh, theorem say that if T is a, a Hilbert space self adjoint operator, then the double commutant of T is minimal. It is, it is small as possible. That is, is exactly the weak closure, the weak closure of the algebra generated by T and the identity. It is remarkable to see that uh, this weak uh, closure is uh, coincide is exactly the same that the the closure in the uniform north topology. Okay, this is appear also in uh, is a part essential also of the John von Neumann theorem. And when uh, this uh, the theorem motivate the following the following definition. If T is a Hilbert space operator, we say that the operator T has the double commutant property if uh, the double commutant is as is, is small as possible. Okay, is the weak closure of the algebra generated by T and identity. Okay. Uh, this uh, 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 to find such algebras, uh, provide uh, examples of a von Neumann algebra, but not necessarily self adjoint. This is the point. Okay, this algebra, if the operator is not self adjoint, is not necessarily self adjoint, right? Okay. And uh, uh, the general theory, uh, question here that is, was developed in the 70s is the following. Assume that you have a Hilbert space operator when the operator T has the double commutant property. And uh, basically, we will see that uh, if an operator has the double commutant property is because the commutant is too small 
or the commutant of the operator is too big. Let me to let me to explain why, okay? But before, let me to introduce the following concept, which is intimately connected with the double commutant property. Given a Hilbert space operator T, we say that the, the commutant of T is minimal when the commutant is as small as possible. That is, the commutant is exactly the weak closure of the algebra generated by T and the identity. Okay. And of course, if uh, if you have an operator T that has the minimal commutant property, then this operator has trivially the double commutant property. Why? Well, because the double commutant is in the midway between the algebra generated by T and the identity and the commutant. Okay by sandwich theorem, more or less, OK? So if the, the commutant is too small, automatically we have that the double commutant also is too small. But also, it is easy to see that when the commutant increase, then the double commutant of the operator decrease, you know, by the, 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 by the definition of the double commutant because are the operators that commute with every operator which are in the commutant. If the commutant is big, okay, less operators have the opportunity to commute with uh, the operator, you know? So the, the double commutant decrease. So for big commutant, intuitively we have that big commutant, all operators with big commutant have also the double commutant property. And why? Why people study in the 70s commutant and bicommutant of, uh, of uh, linear operator? Okay. So basically, there are two sources of study or two motivation to study uh, commutant and bicommutant of, uh, of linear operator. The first one comes from quantum mechanics. Okay. This concept it is used use it in many applications. So uh, the people motivate the, their paper or their work on commutant and commutant of linear operator because uh, this is related intima, intimately related with quantum mechanics, free probability, and many many applications on uh, von Neumann algebras. But uh, the another, not less important uh, source of of, uh, of motivation is the invariant subspace problem, which is, we know that remains open in the in the Hilbert space setting. But uh, this is let me to say that this uh, invariant subspace problem is now a hot uh, a hot topic because n flow per n flow. Uh, presented uh, a proof on the invariant subspace problem that is on the on the revision right on the Hilbert space and why commutant and commutant are intimately connected with the invariant subspace problem let me to say why okay so the commutant and the commutant is connected with the invariant subspace problem because uh, is uh, the commutant determine the structure of the operator? For instance, in 1973, a young Russian mathematician, Viktor Lomonosov, proved the following the following theorem: If T is an operator, even in Banach space, that commutes with an operator A, which is compact. Then the operator not only have has a non-trivial uh, invariant subspace, uh, T has a non-trivial hyperinvariant subspace, which means that it's invariant for every element in the commutant of the operator. Okay. 
So as a consequence, you have that if P is an operator that commute with another operator, A, and A commute with another, a third operator, B, which is compact, okay? Then the first operator T has a non-trivial invariance at the space. So this uh, theorem with, by Viktor Lomonosov, um, uh, which is uh, an elegant proof, and when it was discovered in the 70s, it, 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 it was very strong because uh, lived uh, many 40 years of development obsolete. Many, many results uh, in, in this moment uh, can be obtained directly by Victor Lomonosov result, right? Um, the question in the 70s was the following. Is there a non-trivial operator which doesn't satisfy Lomonosov hypothesis? This was the, uh, the, the question. And a good, a good attack for this question is to try to try with a multiplication operator. We consider the Hardy space, which is the set of analytic functions in the disk, whose Maclaurin coefficient are square summable. And if we consider the multiplication operator by set, uh, also in the system, uh, people know a well, well known, which is the, the invariant subspace uh, of this operator by, this is a theorem by Burling uh, with his factorization in a old term. And the commutant of uh, the multiplication operator, okay, is the, the set of all analytic toeplist operator. That is multiplication operator by bounded analytic function on the unit disk, okay? So this is the reason because many people was studying in the 70, um, studying the commutant of uh, analytic to operator, okay? And Cohen proof, unfortunately, that multiplication operator by set satisfy Lomonosov hypothesis, of course. Uh, multiplication by set has uh, an invariant side space, but also satisfied Lomonosov hypothesis. And uh, let, let's, let's, let's to mention, only mention that the problem was finally solved by Hotwin, Norbert, Rajavi, and Rosenthal, Rosenthal in, the, in the paper that uh, we show. And uh, so there is operators that doesn't satisfy the Lomonosov hypothesis, okay? So, so the questions that uh, the people was in, uh, interested in the 70s are the following. Assume that you have a bounded analytic function. It is possible to describe the commutant of the multiplication operator by the symbol phi. Turner in 1971, for which maps bounded and analytic, the double commutant of the multiplication operator is minimal, or in other words, when the multiplication operator has the double commutant property. And intimately related for which map the commutant of the multiplication operator is minimal, or the operator has the minimal commutant property. This is equivalent. Okay. Okay. So for today, let, let me to say that for today we will solve fully solve it the question three and uh, question two. We will, it will be solved for maps 
for instance, univalent maps, when phi is uh, an entity function, and when phi is an element in the Thomson Cohen class. Later, we will describe the, this, uh, this class, right? Now, let me to, to select some background on the, on the topic. And let me to see that or to say that our, our work built on, on early effort by Cowan, Devens, Baker, Pullman, Thompson, Abraham, every people that appear in, in this slide. Uh, uh, and for, uh, and this question was passed by posted by Turner, Turner in, anti, in his thesis. Uh, uh, as we mentioned before, Cohen proved that multiplication operator doesn't satisfy, sat, so, sorry, satisfy Lomanos of hypothesis. Also, Turner uh, proved that if you have an algebraic operator, the operator T has the double commutant property, which means that in finite dimensional, Every matrix has the double commutant property. Also, Turner was able to characterize normal operator which has the double commutant property. Uh, for instance, uh, a normal operator has the double commutant property if and only if each invariant subspace for T is invariant also by its adjoint. Okay. Um, so many, many people contribute, Thompson, Cohen, Abraham, uh, to characterize the commutant of several analytic toiples operators in a way, right? Um, a remarkable result, I probably the first one, is due to Chills and Wallen, which proved the following. If he is a bounded analytic function which is univalent, then the commutant of the multiplication operator induced by C is the commutant of the multiplication operator induced by Z, which means is that the commutant of the M phi is the set of all analytic to operator, operators, right? which is the commutant of multiplication by set. And the first result with Maria Jose Gonzalez was the following. If you have a symbol which is not univalent and is bounded and analytic, then the multiplication operator phi by, uh, induced by phi don't have the, a minimal commutant. So he, he, if we want this is very interesting because if we want to, to, to find a multiplication operator with a minimal commutant, so the symbol, we have to look in for, for univalent symbol, right? And looking for uh, these uh, univalent symbols, we discover the following characterization, which solve a solves, fully solves the minimal commutant property for multiplication operators for analytic to uplift operators. And we showed that a multiplication operator has a minimal commutant if and only if the polynomials on phi are dense in the Hardy space H2. Let me uh, to, to, to explain this a little, because this property, the polynomials on phi are dense in H2, is not characterized. There, there, there is no characterization, um, geometric characterization of uh, condition two, okay? But uh, we was lacking out because uh, this property was uh, studied uh, for a long time, and we have several conditions 
and we have several uh, information about this uh, this property okay for instance we know the following fact of course if the polynomials on phi are dense in h2 then the map must be univalent but moreover moreover the mass the map phi must be univalent almost everywhere on the boundary on the boundary of, of, the, of the unit disk, you know, because of course I, uh, you know, you have a you have a function boundary function. Uh, the radial limit exists, okay, uh, almost everywhere in the in the unit circle. So uh, the this function. The radial, the radial limit must be univalent. Okay, we can we can define uh, almost everywhere the this function on the boundary on the boundary of the disk. Okay, so on the boundary of the disk, this radial limit must be also univalent. And now, for instance, if we consider sigma, right? We consider sigma. Uh, sorry. No. Not appear the. It's not possible to to use the Apple pencil. No. Ah, no. Okay. If we consider sigma a map, which. Uh, Send the unit disk univalently to onto the ice like this. This is the disk, but minus a segment, right? So this sigma uh, is not univalent on the boundary. Therefore, here we consider the multiplication operator by sigma. We see clearly that uh, this operator, the commutant, his commutant is not minimal, right? This is the idea. However, we have more uh, positive uh, results. If you consider a map that uh, maps here, U is uh, the unit D, sorry. Univalent, univalently onto a simply connected domain whose boundary is a Jordan cure. There is a theory by Karafiodori and was that asserts that the polynomials on phi are dense in H2. Let me to, to explain this uh, by an example. Let us assume that sigma is a map we send the unit disk on this region and suppose that this is a Jordan cure, right? In such a case, we have that multiplication operator has the double commutant property. So the, the sorry, the minimal commutant property. The commutant of the operator is the algebra generated by multiplication edited and the identity and the weak closure. Right. And there are many more characterization or more substance and condition on a map geometrical conditions that assert that the polynomials on this uh, map uh, is dense in H2, right? Let me to, to, to explain some remarks, right? From the result of Devens, it is now that multiplication operator and composition operator are 
intimately related, right? And uh, it is easy to see that, that you have a multiplication operator, we have this formula. Okay, this is the identity. And since science the commutant is invariant on the translation, and also if it is invariant on the scalar multiplication, if we consider C and R uh, convenient, we have that uh, phi is a self math of the unit disk, which means that this composition operator in each two is well defined. Sorry, C. It's just the composition on the right, right? And uh, we, 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 we can't uh, characterize the, uh, the minimal commutant property of the multiplication operator okay, in terms of the cyclicity of this composition operator. Specifically, we have that uh, uh, this multiplication operator by phi has a minimal commutant if and only if for some constant C and R, the composition operator induced by C by phi is cyclic, okay? And cyclic means that there is one vector in H2, such that the linear span of the orbit is dense in H2. So this is, this uh, remark is because there is a relationship between the uh, multiplication operator and composition operator, okay? Uh, let me to, uh, to present uh, the univalent case. Assume that you have an abandoned analytic function in the unit disk, which is univalent. So we was able to prove the following theorem. The multiplication operator has the double commutant property if and only if the polynomials on phi are dense in the space H2. One implication, one implication of, of this theorem is easy, uh, specifically if the polynomials on phi are dense in H2, then of course we have that phi is univalent and moreover uh, the operator has uh, a minimal commutant and therefore the multiplication operator has the double commutant pro property. And the non-trivial part, part is the, the second one. If, if the multiplication has the double commutant property, then the polynomials are dense in phi are dense in H2. And the second step in our series is to try to, to find a non-univalent map phi in H infinite of the unit disk such that uh, the multiplication operator by phi has the double commutant property, okay? This was the, the second step, the next step. And um, we base it our ideas in the following result by the Edens and one, which say the following. If uh, phi is a bounded analytic function in the unit disk, that a single cover and non-empty neighborhood the image of phi of the unit disk, okay, W is contained in phi of B. So if phi single cover, uh, non empty open subset, then the commutant of the, of the multiplication operator by phi 
is the commutant of multiplication by set. Uh, the this and want uh, is uh, results is an extension of, of uh, chills and valent results, which is only for for univalent univalent function. Uh, they observe it or point out that it only it is necessary to that the the, the map single cover a non empty non empty neighborhood w w of the image. Of the unit disk. Okay. Um, here we show the following result. Here you have a map which is not univalent, but the uh, phi single cover and non empty neighborhood of the image of phi, then the multiplication in operator induced by phi don't have the double commutant property. Okay. Uh, let me to with an example to to uh, to illustrate this result. Okay, if we consider the cardio the cardi this cardioid map. Okay, set plus one and a half raise it to the two. Uh, so this part. It's an open set which is single cover. Um, the map is not univalent. This region is double covered, right? So in, in this case, by all result, we know that the symbol, the multiplication operator by phi, don't have the double commutant property. Okay. So in our series of uh, by solving our, our, our question, we try to to looking for um, a map which is not univalent and that the commutant is too big in order to get that the double commutant is uh, the the, commut the double commutant is minimal, right? I'm looking. Looking in the in the literature, we we found that the following result by Kukovic, who described the element of the of the Toeplitz algebra that commute with multiplication by set n, multiplication by set n, right? So the commutant of this operator is too too big. But Gukovi was able to describe the element that commute with uh, this operator, but which are in the toilet algebra. So this operator uh, is a good candidate. This operator is to a good candidate uh, for to have the double commutant property because the, the his commutant is too too big, right? And this is the result or result. Multiplication operator by set n has the double commutant property. Let me to 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 give a, a sketch of the proof, right? Because late, uh, we discover we discover that uh, this operator uh, is induced by an inner function, and we discover later that for inner function it is it is true, right? By a result by Turner. But the idea, this the, this idea is original. We consider lambda one and lambda n the root of the unity. That this lambda j to the power n is equal to one for all j. And we consider the following operator: t j acting on f set is just F acting on lambda j set. Okay, and it is easy to see that this operator belongs to the commutant. Uh, 
okay, for all G. And he will consider ahora, now, he will consider now an element in the double commutant, okay. Then this element, sorry, must commute with this operator. And this force that there is um, an analytic function, uh, J, such that F H of set is equal to G of set to the power N. And from this, using some ideas of uh, of uh, chills and volume, we was able to show that uh, uh, we can approximate the operator MH by polynomials on C10 in the weak operator topology. Okay, this is the the idea of the proof. Sorry. Uh, okay. But uh, as I say, this is part of a general general result that I will um, say now. Okay. Turner in 1971 was able to prove that non unitary isometry has the double commutant property. Okay. If T is a non unitary isometry, then the, he have the, the double commutant property. In particular, if phi is inner, so this multiplication operator is a non-unitary isometry, so therefore has the double commutant property, in particular, in particular, set to the power n. But let, let us recall with this uh, an inner function, right? Uh, as I say before, for above the analytic function, F, we can uh, consider the radial limit, which exists almost everywhere on the inner circle. And uh, above the analytic function is inner if uh, the modulus of such such a function is equal to one almost everywhere in the unit circle. Okay. Um, so we have to, to um, the following ingredient, but to show the the double commutant property for symbols induced by by entity functions. Okay. We consider the unit circle, but the unit circle has a curve, okay? A curve which is clockwise orient oriented, right? And if phi is an analytic function on the closure of the unit disk, we can consider by composition this curve in the in the plane, right? And of course, we can consider the wind number, the wind number uh, of this curve around one point, which is not in the curve. Sorry, this is uh, this is phi, right? Okay. And we consider the minimal the minimal of this winding number, okay? And, we, and this minimal we denote by k of phi, okay? So Baker, Dedens, and Hulman prove the following result: if phi is a non-constant and d function, and k 
is k of phi, this minimum. Then there is an entity function h such that phi of z is exactly equal to h acting on z to the power k. And uh, k of h, which is the minimum of this uh, uh, winning number, is equal to 1. So this is a result on analytic function, but uh, as a consequence, we have some consequence. The first one is that uh, the commutant of this multiplication operator is exactly the commutant of multiplication operator by z to the power k. Okay, and if phi has the following the following expansion series expansion then as a direct consequence k of phi is the general common divisor of the of the natural numbers n for which the coefficient a n is not zero right and using this result we was able to prove the following the following result okay assume that we have phi an entity function and assume that this infimum k of phi is k and let us suppose that uh, the the map is prevalent on some point when p is bigger than k in such a case multiplication by by phi don't have the double commutant property and moreover if we consider an entity functions with k of phi, the infimum of the winded number, if there is this one point for which the winded number is p and p is bigger than k, then the multiplication operator don't have the double commutant property. Let me to 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 write. An example of uh, and to illustrate uh, by sorry let me to illustrate with an example okay so you have phi and t function. We consider gamma the unit circle. We, if we compose, okay, this is a curve. Okay, this is a curve in the in the plane, right? And some points here has with the number. For instance, this has wind number one, or this is probably wind number uh, two or three. So in any case, when you have points with which wind the number, different wind the number, then the commutant is not minimal. So the commutant, sorry, the double commutant of M phi is not minimal. If we consider, for instance, a set to the power n, this property, of course, this uh, uh, this map don't have this property, right? Every point, the wind number is n, right? But moreover, using using the uh, approximation theory, we was able to to characterize um, when an entity function has the double commutant property. Okay, assume that theta is an in, a bounded analytic function on the unit this, and we denote by h theta 
the linear span of the powers of theta, right? And we we take closure also, okay? So the linear span, the closer linear span of the um, of the powers of the function of the function theta. Of course, this is a subspace, okay? This is a subspace of H two. A closed subspace. So uh, we was was able to prove the following. Assume that phi is an entity function with uh, the minimal window number equal to k. So the following condition are equivalent. The multiplication operator by uh, induced by phi has the double commutant property. And the second condition is the polynomials on phi are dense in the subspace h to uh, h to set to the power k, right? Okay, let me to finish some minutes. Okay, and now we finish uh, our, our talk uh, with. The, the, the last result, which, are, which is a generalization of the, of the, of the previous result. And the idea is to, to, to consider a bigger class. So TC of D is the Thomson Cohen, Cohen class, which is the, the class of bounded analytic function phi for which there is a point in the unit in the unit this such that the inner part of this uh, function is a finite basket product. In particular, TC of D contains all functions bounded analytic and analytic in the closed unit disk. And Thomson and Cohen um, was able to, to extend in some sense Baker and Baker, Dedens and Hulman result by proving that if you have a, a function in the Thomson Cohen class, then there is a finite blasket product B and an, uh, an H, a bounded analytic function, the unit X, such that phi is equal to H of B. Okay? As a consequence, the commutant of M phi is equal to the commutant of the of the blasket product, okay, of the multiplication operator induced by the blasket product. And we'll be able to prove the following. Assume that we have an, a, a function in the Thomson Cohen class, and then the following condition are equivalent. Multiplication operator by phi has the double commutant property, and second, the polynomials on phi are dense in the subspace H of B. Okay. And finally, let me to see the following example. If we consider, uh, if we consider, for instance, an analytic function which map univalently the unit disk onto the slit disk, okay? And we consider a finite blasket product. This composition by the last theorem don't have the double commutant property. However, for any point, we can define the width number. The width number now is constant. The winding number is constant. Okay, so we know that uh, for the Thomson Cowan class, the condition on the winding number is not sufficient, okay, to obtain the double commutant property. However, using uh, uh, to consider the approximation, it is possible to characterize this property. Okay, we finish by saying that uh, this is uh, the material uh, uh, 
okay, some papers related with the commutant and double commutant property. And thank you very much for your attention. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Fernando, for a very nice presentation. And we have time for questions. Okay. Yeah, we have. All right, this applause, not hands. Okay. So questions, no, please. No. Maybe I have a very small question about the, maybe about the um, related subject, you know, when you study the question of commutants, uh, for instance, commutants of tuplet separators, in case of tuplet separators, there is a very close problem that can be reduced to the problem or vice versa. For instance, if you have two operators, these two different, maybe simple symbols, TA, TA and two TB, right? And you construct a product to the separators, uh, TA times after TB. Then the question is whether you can, whether this operator is again a tuple separator, whether um, you can find the symbol C such that TA multiplied by TB equals to TC, you know? Not. I see. Did you study so, this question as well? Uh, so this question is related. Uh, so every question, uh, every result which is true in the in the hardy space, okay, for toeplit operator. I think this question for toeplit analytic toeplit operator for analytic is true. But um, in the hard space, I see toeplit operator, not only analytic toeplit, of course, analytic toeplit operator is, is clearly true. Uh, I think uh, in the, in, uh, if I don't remember, in the, in the, Hill, in the, in the hard space, it is true because this is an algebra, the Hilbert algebra, uh, the toeplit algebra. But, but in the Berman space, not. So it, it yes, is it's good not true, but in some particular case, it can be done. Ah, yes, yes, in the Berman. So there are some particular cases, and I, I also had a paper on this issue, and it's interesting to, uh, I can send you a paper, because everything in our paper is related to Fourier analysis, actually, because we managed to represent these um, symbols of tuplet separators via the Fourier transform, and then the equation is related to uh, coincidence of Fourier transforms. And also with the sum Luigi, we did similar issues and how plane, but maybe next I, I will send you by email the papers. Yeah. But I just wonder in this in your case whether or not uh, you studied this question as well because it's related to semi commutants, you know. But you didn't do semi commutants, no? So the, the the question in the in the Berman space is, is another one. Different yeah. technique. Yes. So yes. a good source of problem is to know one property which is true in the, in the hardy space and to try to prove in the Berman space is another another word, right? Yes. Yeah. But I agree. Also, but also many of the results that we present are only true for Hilbert space. Of course, if you if you try to to many some of them work, right? <laughs> <laughs> this question for him, for instance, for HP, for the Hardy space HP with P different than two, it is not possible because we use many, many times we use von Neumann inequalities, which characterize the Hilbert space, right? It is, it is a very special. Uh, so these results are very special. Hilbert yeah, I said space, that, that, that it's not. Uh, yeah, I'm Fernando, I said that this question is not related exactly to your talk, but it's close to your talk. So, I okay, thank you. Maybe more questions, please. Okay, please go ahead. Uh, well, my question is, uh, uh, what about your results in the several variable case? You consider Hardy space on the closed unit disk. Uh, yeah, I don't understand. Yes, we consider the Hardy space on the closed 
you need this. Uh, no, yeah, no, we, no. We, con we consider uh, the the question in the hardy space, but yeah, uh, we we solve the question when the when the symbol is in the in the bounded for um, bounded analytic flange function in the closed unit disk. Which is yeah, unique. now you replace closed unit disk by a closed unit poly disk, for example. That is so the poly several disk. variable case. Yeah, poly disk. Ah, poly disk. Poly disk. Uh, I don't know in the poly disk. Because you refer to Kukovic result. Uh, Kukovic result is true not only not only and, uh, uh, and uh, there are developments in the several variable case uh, of Kukovic result I think after 1994. Yes, I see. I see. We don't think it uh, in this uh, in this question. Probably okay. the next. Thing. We are more in, more, more interesting in to try to 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 give a complex a, um, a complete characterization for bounded analytic function, but this problem resists. Okay. Right. <clears throat> okay. More questions, please. Well, I don't see more hands, but we already had very nice discussion on this subject. So let's thank our speaker for a very nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Thank uh, you very much. Fernando thank you very much. Saavedra for a very nice presentation, for a very nice talk. And well, see you all in two weeks. Thank you to all of our participants, thank you, yeah, and you. goodbye.